Hi, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about the best update to Spacey in really the last couple years, at least since Spacey 3.0 came out. And this update is Spacey Layout, a new package that you can install from Explosion AI, the creators of Spacey, that natively works with it. Why is Spacey Layout such a big deal? It means for the first time you can pass a PDF to a Spacey pipeline and do things like bounding box detection, to do things like region detection, table detection, image detection, and then also process those regions through an OCR pipeline. That OCR pipeline is going to be coming from Docling, and basically Spacey Layout is a wrapper around Docling, which is a way of processing different PDFs and images and doing things like bounding box detection and OCR. Why is it such a big deal? It means that in one line of code, you can process an entire PDF, OCR it, do table detection, and also get all the benefits that Spacey natively offers you, things like part of speech tracking, named entity recognition. This means that you'll also have page level understanding of your document. This means that you can also do a lot of cool downstream things. Imagine you want to understand how a particular entity appears across an entire document. You can now easily map that by taking each of the individual pages and seeing how frequently it appears across the entire PDF. This allows for you to do really kind of more robust things, but most importantly, provides you one line of code to do all these things. It means that one line of code, you can OCR your document. Presuming it's on a modern typeface in a PDF, you'll have pretty good results here. You'll also be able to take your tables and convert them to things like Markdown or convert them into a pandas data frame. This means you can take data that's unstructured as an image instead of a PDF and get some structured outputs from it. This is, in my opinion, one of the biggest things that will be useful to you if you work with PDFs, which are notoriously tricky to work with. And the big thing about this is that it really comes with the LLMs in mind. So you can do things like output as markdown. And I'm gonna show you a couple tricks with this library and give you some extra code for doing things like reconstructing an image with bounding boxes attached to it. I've submitted this PR to Spacey Layout, so you can at least see how to do this in their readme. Hopefully they accept it. But overall, I'm very excited about it. As you all probably know, I talk about Spacey a lot on this channel. And that's because I think it's the best NLP framework in Python. Explosion AI, the creators behind it, do not pay me to say that. This is just my genuine opinion. And if you want to learn more about Spacey, then check out one of my 100 videos on this channel that talk about Spacey. Now, with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into the notebook and start learning how to use Spacey Layout to do all these different really cool tasks. Now that we're in our notebook, let's go ahead and get started. You'll notice that we're using Python version 3.11.11, .11, but you can use anything that you want here. I'd recommend something like Python 3.10 or above, but that's just me. We're gonna be working with a couple different libraries here. Spacey Layout, obviously, that's the name of this entire video, but we're also gonna be working with Spacey. Now, Spacey Layout should go ahead and just install Spacey for you, but we're being explicit right here. We're also gonna be working with the NCore WebSM model, and so this bit of code is gonna go ahead and download that for you. This is the small English model. This is entirely optional, but we're gonna use it later on in this video when we go ahead and try and get some named entity recognition outputs alongside of our layout detection. So let's go ahead and install both of these by executing this cell. Now I've already got both of these installed. However, if you're using this for the first time, you may see different outputs here. Once we have everything installed correctly, we can go ahead and import our required libraries. We're gonna be importing Spacey, which is gonna be the main library that would be used for all of our NLP tasks. And we're also gonna be importing from Spacey Layout, the Spacey Layout class. This is gonna be what handles all of our layout detection and OCR. So let's go ahead and import both of those. Once we've imported the required libraries, we can start processing our document. And in order to do that, we need to go ahead and load up a standard Spacey pipeline here. Now, remember how we downloaded the NCore WebSM model? We're gonna go ahead and load that in with, by setting it equal to NLP. And this is gonna create an NLP object for us, which is going to be the entire Spacey pipeline. If you wanna learn more about what this pipeline is and how it works and what all the components are in it, I have over a hundred videos on this channel on Spacey. Once we have that loaded, we also need to load up an instance of that Spacey layout class. We're gonna stick with Spacey's documentation here and call this layout. This is gonna take one argument and that's gonna be a Spacey pipeline. Right now we're gonna be using the NCore Web SM pipeline, but you could also be used using the blank EN pipeline. We're gonna be using this one because we can get all the benefits of the standard English small pipeline, such as part of speech tagging, named entity recognition, etc. 
So let's go ahead and execute this cell and we've loaded up an instance of that layout detection pipeline. Once we have all done all that, everything is actually done. To use spacey layout, you're only gonna have to pass one single line. You're gonna create a doc object with that layout instance. And that's gonna allow us to just pass one single argument, which is gonna be a string value that points to the PDF that you want to process. In the case of this repository, we're working with this particular PDF, which sits inside of our data subdirectory. This is gonna be a single testimony from the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum in DC. And like I always do in my videos, I try to use real world data because this is reflective of things that you'll encounter in the real world. On the surface, this PDF looks fairly straightforward to OCR. And in fact, you could probably use something like Adobe Acrobat's built-in OCR. However, a lot of the off-the-shelf OCR solutions to this problem space really are gonna fail in a couple ways. And it seems kind of interesting that they do so. But things like Q, colon, and this space result in a lot of bad bounding box detection that wants to separate the Q colon from the corresponding text right here. And oftentimes when you print out the corresponding text, you'll get misaligned values. So you'll sometimes have Q above, sometimes Q below, and it makes doing things like getting some kind of structured data output very, very challenging. The reason why I like Spacey Layout is because it uses DocLing. And as we're going to see, DocLing can handle these kinds of small issues very easily. So we're going to go ahead and close this and run through this entire, uh, entire PDF. And when we execute this cell, we're actually going through all 17 pages. We're doing things like layout detection and OCR. And on my machine, which is a new MacBook, it's done in roughly six seconds. For you, you're gonna probably see things like downloading the uh, region detection model, downloading the HTR model. These are all coming from DocLing and they take a few seconds depending on your internet connection. Once we process that, we can go ahead and start examining this doc object. And we can use the .txt attribute to look at the entire text. And as we can see, everything has been OCR'd. This is again, standard spacey syntax. We also have the ability to look at this exact same thing by looking at the markdown output, which we can access with the special attribute. Note here that special attributes in spacey have the syntax of dot underscore dot. This is because this is a custom attribute that spacey layout built because it doesn't exist in the main spacey pipeline or the main spacey library. And when we print this off, we see a markdown version of this exact same document. Now, why is this useful? Well, markdown is really useful, especially if you want to do something like feed this into a large language model. Large language models are particularly suited to parse markdown. It has the same kind of content as HTML, not all of it, but a lot of it, while at the same time being less verbose. For example, we can use two number signs here to indicate a header value of an h2, whereas in HTML, you'd have a lot more characters to represent the same exact concept. So Markdown is really useful for a lot of different things, including feeding into an LLM. Now let's go ahead and keep on looking at what else we can extract. If we had tables in this particular document or PDF, we could extract the tables here by accessing the dot underscore dot tables attribute. We don't have any tables in this. And if you want to see a video on tables and how well this works, let me know and I'll make a separate video on tables because tables require their own kind of attention, in my opinion. Now, the main thing that you get from this entire pipeline is the dot underscore dot layout. Now, this is going to be your bread and butter. This is where a lot of your data sits. So this is the top level layout that has the layout at the doc level. This breaks down everything for you for all your different pages. We can access all the different pages right here by taking a look at the dot pages attribute after dot layout. And this allows us to see the width and the height and the page number of all of the pages that we have. So this gives us a big top level overview of our entire PDF. But Spacey Layout does a lot more. We can access individual pages by accessing the special pages attribute. Notice here that we're using dot underscore dot pages, and we're going to grab the second index, which is going to correspond to page three. And I've selected page three because that's the first page on which we have a full body of text. And if we print this off, we'll notice that we have something that looks like this. We're returned a tuple of two values. The first is going to be that same kind of page data. This is really good if you need to map the data that you're looking at back to the original page layout to know where you are. The second thing that we're going to have is a list of all of our different texts. Now, each of these are going to be special kind of span classes within Spacey Layout that allows us to access all the individual metadata for each of these things like label, things like the raw text, etc. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what that looks like. 
We can access each one of these by iterating over, iterating over page three here by grabbing index two. And we're going to just look at the first example, sorry, the first uh, index in that output. So all the different section data. And we can print off all these things, including the label, the actual raw text, and the layout information of that particular span. Now let's take a look at what these look like. Label corresponds to something like this, section header, list item, text, etc. These are all different kinds of labels that you'll have available to you. And inside this spacey layout uh, documentation, you can have access to all the different types of labels that you'll see. Next, we have the actual raw text. This is the raw text of the individual section. This is really useful if you need to grab that raw text to do some kind of downstream processing. And the label lets you know what that actual text is, if it's a header, if it's a list item, etc. The next thing, and this is probably very important for a lot of downstream tasks, is we have access to the dot underscore dot layout at the section level. Now, why is this useful? Well, it gives us an X, a Y, a width, and a height. Now, why is this useful? Well, this is exactly what you need to re-render the image with bounding boxes so that you know not only what the text is, but where it actually appears on the page. And the reason why I love this package so much is because Spacey and Explosion AI have really thought through all the attributes that you really want to have at this layer. And it also tells you the page number. This means that I can process each individual section and I never have to do anything clever like keeping track of what page I'm on. Because at this point in the loop, I can always grab the page number from the individual section level. This is really, really helpful and keeps your code a lot cleaner because I can just grab at the spacey layout, I can grab an index page underscore no and get that exact page number at any point. So with all this data, I can actually reconstruct the individual page with bounty boxes and with text. If we scroll down here, we're gonna install matplotlib and this is some quick code that I just submitted a, a, P, a pull request for on layouts, a spacey layouts uh, repository. This allows for us to go ahead and visualize all of that data. And I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit so we can kind of take a look at this in its full size. You'll notice that we've got the entire page now rendered with the bounding boxes and the corresponding labels. We also have behind the scenes the actual text. I opted not to print that off because that would have been a bit more verbose and that kind of made the, the visualization a little clunky, but you have access to this raw text and most importantly, where it appears on the page. For a lot of different downstream tasks, having both of these things is very useful. And real quickly, we're gonna scroll back down and take a look at some final bit of code. What do you do with this data? Well, I always support people who want to process text through Spacey because Spacey gives you the ability to understand a lot of other things about your text besides one task that you want to do. It allows for you to know the named entity recognition, uh, the entities that are found within the text through NER, or named entity recognition. It also lets you go ahead and find all the parts of speech of everything. So for example, I not only have access to the now HTR or OCR text, I also have access to the bounding boxes. And most importantly, I now, if I process the same document back through my original uh, NLP pipeline, we're able to go ahead and now also access all of the entities. And what this section of code is doing is it's taking in that original document passing it through the NLP model or pipeline, not the layout pipeline, and then creating a new document, doc2, that has not only all of the data that inherits from the original layout pipeline, it now has all the extra data from the NLP pipeline, which means now I know on what page certain entities appear, so I can map things that can maybe frequency of an entity's appearance across the, the length of an interview, I can do a lot of really sophisticated things at this point by using and leveraging both the things like the NER data alongside the layout data. So why am I a big fan of Spacey Layout? Because all of this is possible with really just one line of code, which is the one that we saw at the very top of this notebook right here. All of this is done with just processing a single PDF through a single layout pipeline. If you have texts that are typed, this is probably the best way, at least right now in early 2025, of processing a document uh, that's a PDF or a sequence of images and getting some kind of structured output that can then be used in an NLP pipeline. By doing this in spacey layout, you really achieve about seven or eight different steps that are oftentimes very clunky if they have to be customized. You achieve all of them very cleanly in just one line of code. 
I encourage you to at least experiment with this and test it out and see if it works on your data. As always, thank you so much to everyone who supports this channel. If you do get a lot out of it, please do subscribe. And if you can, feel free to contribute via Patreon or by YouTube membership down below, all of which is linked. If you want to follow along with this notebook, you'll be able to, like I said earlier, you can access it on the GitHub repository, which will be linked down below, which also has a Google Colab link. Have a great day, everyone.